With the release of patch 1.83 Masters of the Sea, the long-awaited open beta test of War Thunder's naval forces has begun. You may have heard in videos or posts covering the topic that the aiming system is quite different and difficult to figure out, but few have actually explained exactly how it works. With this video, I hope to show you how it functions and how to use it effectively. Your first step in the process is to go to your ship's control tab and under your camera settings, make sure that your mouse wheel is set to Sight Distance Control. You can alternatively set this to whatever makes you comfortable, but this method is the most convenient in my experience. In addition, I also recommend setting up controls for ranging shot, which will allow you to fire single rounds individually. While you are here, if you haven't already, you should also bind the controls to select your primary, secondary, and anti-aircraft weapons. I also recommend binding the controls that command your AI gunners to manually target specific enemies with specific weapons. Note, however, that your AI gunners will have to be set to engage the types of targets selected in order for them to obey your orders. For example, if I set my gunners to hold their fire and I tell my secondaries to fire at a specific aircraft or ship, they will hold their fire until I set them to engage only aircraft, only ships, or all targets. In this case, I have selected a PT boat for my anti-aircraft guns and an aircraft, a BF-110, for my 40mm secondaries. The 40mm secondaries have shot down the enemy aircraft, while my anti-aircraft secondaries continue to destroy the smaller ship. It is also worth noting that whatever weapon you have selected and are currently controlling will, will ignore whatever orders you give it. So in this case, if I'm controlling my primary armament, my 5-inch guns, and I tell them to attack an enemy vessel, they will not be removed from my control. I will still maintain control of them until I switch to another weapon type, at which point my primary weapons will engage whatever I selected. Another couple of settings you might want to change are located in your options under your naval settings. Here, you will want to turn off the Shooting Without Alignment option, which allows you to see the range your weapons are set to, no matter what vessel you are using. And if you want the game to save your secondary weapons choices between battles, you can change that here as well. If you don't want it to save, you can also select the default state of your AI gunners at the start of every battle here. Now that you have your controls set up, let's talk about how to actually aim in naval forces. Enter your gun sight and take a look at the layout. If you have played War Thunder Ground Forces, this sight layout will initially look very familiar. However, there are some key things to point out here. The first thing to make note of is that the crosshair at the center of the sight does not necessarily represent where your armament is pointing. This is represented by the white circles moving about your screen. After waiting for your guns to align with the target and selecting it, you will see three numbers pop up. The first number is the estimated range to your target. The second number, next to the word error, to the right of that, determines how potentially far off this estimate is. This margin of error can be reduced through the training and upgrading of various crew skills, and will change depending on the direction and speed of the target in question. Finally, the third number represents the range that your weapons are set to. Speaking of which, let's talk about ranging. Manually adjusting the range of your weapons is a critical part of learning how to properly lead your targets within the game. The amount of lead is often determined by the margin of error in your fire director's range estimation. Like I mentioned earlier, this margin of error fluctuates up and down depending on the speed and direction of the selected target as well as your crew skills. Adjust your elevation and thereby the impact point of your shells by scrolling your mouse wheel up and down. Scrolling up or away from you will cause the guns to elevate and increase the distance between you and the point of impact, while scrolling down or towards you will decrease the range by default. Now, because staying in place is essentially suicide in War Thunder Naval Forces, it's critical that a majority of the time you keep moving. This applies to the enemy as well, and it creates a unique scenario where you are often firing weapons from angles that are not parallel to your direction of travel or moving platforms. This means that leading is not only taking place in the abscissa, or x-axis, also in the applicant, or z-axis. To demonstrate, let's look at some different scenarios. In the first case, both ships are arranged parallel to one another and are traveling in the same direction. In this case, the only lead we have to apply is aiming ahead of the point we want our shells to impact. The amount of lead you will apply decreases the closer the vessels are to one another. In this case, we are both rapidly closing on one another and the range between us is constantly decreasing. 
So instead of adjusting my range higher, I will lower my range setting to anywhere between 75 to 200 meters below what my fire director has estimated. This will aid the guns to fire at the position the target will be at rather than the position he is currently sitting. If the rounds impact in front of the target, your range is set too low. If it sails over the target or only clips the top of him, it's set too high. In this third and final example, we are traveling parallel yet again, however we are also traveling in opposite directions. Because we are both moving platforms, we have to take our ship's momentum into account and apply more lead to the target than would normally be required. In addition, as he moves away from us, we will have to start elevating the guns to start aiming for the point in front of where we want our shots to land. During the entirety of these last three cases, we are constantly adjusting the range and elevation up and down accordingly to keep shots landing at the height we want and at the distance we want. Now if lots of mouse scrolling isn't really your thing, you can always simply reacquire the target and the range by pressing the select target button again. However, there are major downsides to this. First off, your guns will aim to hit the center of mass of the target, and are not likely to hit critical components that will quickly sink the enemy vessel. You are far more likely to hit the island, the smokestacks, or the weapons on deck. Another problem with this method of aiming is that it does not compensate for lead on its own short of simply reacquiring the target and hopefully firing before it changes. You can throw off your guns and lead to longer delays between effective salvos. In War Thunder Naval Forces, volume of fire is everything. Especially if a ship is moving, the most efficient way to get the guns to properly depress in order to aim for components such as the magazine below the water lines of most ships is to use your mouse wheel or manual elevation control whatever you have this set to. You can do this to an extent by simply pointing your guns towards the waterline with your mouse, but this is only useful against ships at medium range and is more akin to a wild guess than an actually aimed shot. A third problem with this method is that it does not work well when you have multiple targets stacked on top of or near each other, as the game has difficulty figuring out which one you're actually trying to select. And that's it! Now that you understand the basics of aiming in War Thunder Naval Forces, all that is left to do is simply get out there and practice. Aiming is one of the more complex aspects of naval, but it is incredibly rewarding and sensible once you learn how to use it. If you have any further questions or feel I missed something, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. And without further ado, this has been Many Miles Away. Keep your holes checked, keep your optics cleared, and your magazines topped up, and I will see you all in the next video.